Hi, I'm Michael. I'm one of the product managers here at ICANN. I'm here today to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, one of the new features in our ICANN VX uh, series monitors. The VX7E is an enhanced version of our previous model, the VX7. One of the enhanced features that we've added this time is something that people have been asking for for quite a while, and that is false color. What I have set up for you is I've got a camera. Uh, this is a, a camera with a running SDI. I have it running into the VX7E, and I've just uh, aimed it at a, a little scene here in our, in our offices. Um, if you look at the monitor, uh, this is the way you'd probably see it most of the time. Uh, this is a, a full color readout with, this, with, the, with na the natural colors of what's actually in the scene. Um, and as I open my iris, you can see that things start to look a little overexposed and I can iris down and uh, things will look, start looking underexposed. Um, you put it back somewhere in the middle here and I'm going to uh, turn on the false color. And as I turn the false color on, you'll see that the colors in the scene have been replaced by uh, these yellows and blues and grays and greens. And essentially as we close the iris down, you'll see that more and more as the scene gets darker and darker, uh, all the colors, natural colors get replaced by blues and grays. As I start to open the iris up, you'll see that most of the scene has start to be replaced by yellows and reds. Um, in this particular case, anything that's red means that it's over 100 IRE. So if you were to look on a waveform, a traditional waveform monitor, uh, most everything that has the red section on it would, have, would be over the, over the 100 uh, IRE line. Uh, as we close down, close down, I can close this all the way down and everything turns blue. That means that we are below, say, 15 or 20 IRE. It's very dark. Uh, I can actually, uh, this camera won't out put anything below uh, zero IRE, uh, but the monitor, if it, we were below zero IRE, would actually go into like a, a magenta color, kind of a, a reddish pink color, to let you know that you're below 100 IRE. Um, now, it's real easy on the, on the ends of the scale to interpret the reds and the, and the, and, and the magentas uh, that you're outside of what's legal IRE range. Uh, but we have some colors that are very special in between. Uh, first of all, these yellows. Uh, if we have anything that's in the yellow range uh, like this, that means it's over uh, 85 IRE. Uh, I'm going to close this uh, iris down a little bit and you'll see that we've got a little bit of a, uh, a dark, a, a pale green in here. And that pale green means that we're between uh, 80 to 84 IRE. There is a very dark green, it's kind of hard to see in here uh, on this particular uh, demonstration, but that is right at exactly 80 IRE. Uh, we have, as we go a little bit darker, uh, you'll see some places have some pink. The pink is uh, very specifically uh, uh, 56 IRE. And then there is a purple, uh, dark purple color that is 45 IRE. Uh, those colors correspond to very specific uh, color situations. Um, I'm going to turn this back off and open the uh, scene back up. And if you look in the scene here, I've got a traditional gray card in the scene. This is uh, what a lot of people use to help them set exposures. Um, the gray card, this is particular one, is the 18% reflective gray color card, um, and that uh, is help, will help you set the average brightness of an average scene. Uh, we've set our, our colors, uh, for our false colors up, so that if you have uh, purple on uh, something that is like a gray card, that means that you're right about, that gray card is reading right about uh, 45 IRE. And as you guys see, as I open my iris and close my iris here, that the colors will start to go through. Now, the lighting we have on the card is not exactly even, and the card's kind of tilted and stuff like that. So we're not getting an exactly uh, complete purple all across the card. But what I'm going to try to do in this particular case is adjust the iris so that I get the most amount of purple on the card that I can get. And once I have that set on there, I can say that the, the scene that we're shooting uh, the iris is set properly to get 45 IRE off of that gray card within the scene that we have right now. Um, now this is not an exact science with these. This takes a little takes a little interpretation for you guys. You have to decide on your own how much purple you want it on one side of the card or the whole card. Uh, if you want it a little bit past purple, a little bit under purple, that's going to a lot to depend upon your exposure needs, uh, your camera needs. Uh, but this is a good way for you to quickly get. 
uh, set that uh, gray card to be 45 IRE without having a separate scope or if you have a camera that does not have a waveform monitor built into it. Um, I'm going to turn, the, uh, turn this back on and I'm going to open it back up a little bit and then I'm going to look at something like uh, this yellow right here. Uh, the yellow, if we look, is this light gray, uh, this light gray um, uh, part of the, uh, the, the rack here. And so when the false color's on, if you see that yellow on there, that means that the, that, that, that part of the image uh, is over 85 IRE. Now whether that's supposed to be 85 IRE or not, that's kind of up to interpretation for you. Usually 85 IRE is somewhere where you want the, some of your darker whites to start showing up. And usually your maximum whites you want around 90 to 95 IRE depending upon what you're shooting and how bright you want the scene. I can actually look on here, I can actually see there's a little white label that's on the front of this, uh, uh, on the front of this uh, deck here and as I turn the false color back on, I can actually see a little bit of red creeping in there, and so that means on the very edges of that white label that's on that, uh, that, that old deck there, that means that red part there, that's over 100 IRE. So if I want to make sure that that part does not go over 100 IRE, I can just close my iris down and you can see that now that we're, we've got it, uh, that it is a, 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 a complete yellow. Uh, it's yellow completely with no red. Uh, what's surrounding it there is uh, not yellow, so if I turn this back on, that lets me know that that, uh, that white piece of uh, label on there is somewhere in between 85 to 100 IRE. Uh, and if I want to make sure it's right at 85, what I can do is I can take the iris down until it turns from a green. And as soon as it turns from the green to the yellow, that means that part of the, the label on there is just above 85 IRE. Uh, so once you have that set, then you can pretty much guarantee that it's probably where you want some of your whites, depending upon your shooting style and the way you like to shoot. I have a subject in front of the camera now, a person, and we'll turn this back off the false color so you can see. Uh, there's our lovely Ryan, one of the uh, social uh, media guys here in, t in the office, uh, sending in. And so as I turn the false color back on, you'll see that it goes from natural colors to these blues and yellows. Uh, for when we're shooting a person, uh, those with Caucasian skin tones, the, 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 the color, false color that we're going to be looking for is pink. And as I close and open the iris, you'll see that uh, he starts to turn yellow on one side of the face to red. And so if you see yellow and red on somebody's face, uh, you can pretty much guarantee that, the, 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 that he's being burned in there, that is, he's overexposed uh, wherever you see yellow and red on the face. You don't want yellow and red on a person's face unless they're maybe a ghost or something like that. Uh, I'll turn the false color back off and uh, I will start to close the iris down. As I close the iris down, you'll see part of the face goes from yellow into the green. There's some gray, but what we're looking for is pink. And uh, I'm gonna let me zoom in here. Now, if we look on the very uh, corner of his cheek right there, you'll see that we've got a little bit of pink on there. If we open it up, it'll turn from pink to gray. Uh, to yellow and green, and the yellows and greens means that his, his face, the, hi the highlights on his face is over uh, 80 IRE, which is a little bit much for many skin tones. Um, uh, you, know, you see on the very edge there is some pink uh, before it goes into blue. Uh, what you want to do is, uh, on a good portion of the face, you want to have as much pink as possible. If you have no pink and you're down in the purples and, and, and dark blues, that means his face is probably going to be underexposed. Uh, if you open it all the way up so there's lots of yellows and, uh, and greens on there, his face is going to be overexposed. So what you want to do is close the iris down until uh, maybe some of the yellow starts to go away. If you've got some gray and some pink, that means the portions of his face are at 56 IRE, which is uh, what we want for most Caucasian skin tones. And I'll turn this back off and you'll see that we have a uh, properly exposed face. If you look on the highlights, that the, the, the highlights are starting to burn in. Uh, and that, uh, the, that he's not underexposed. So the pink is a very important color uh, for, uh, for helping expose skin tones. Now along with our, our false color with our specific uh, color points for uh, 45 IRE, 56 IRE, uh, 80 to 85 IRE, and 100, um, we also have an added feature, especially for the, if you're worried about going over or under level. Um, as before, uh, we showed you that if we start to go over level, 
uh, that we will start to get red and yellow warnings. Um, this is actually the, the, where the red kicks in is actually user uh, definable. Um, I'll go ahead and go into our menu here. We'll pull the menu up and I will go down to uh, the uh, Luma over warning. And as you see right here, right now, well, let's turn it back on here. As you see, the Luma over warning right now is set for 100. I can actually start to change that. And as I change it, you'll see that the red starts to cover a greater area. And what this means, uh, as I have it set right now, is set for 90 so that right now, anything that is over 90 IRE is displayed in red. I can uh, set that to uh, any level that we want from 85 IRE up to over 100 IRE. I believe we go to 110. So 110 IRE all the way down to 85 IRE that you can set that if you want to. Uh, allows you to customize it and say if you're, especially if you're working in white uh, uh, backgrounds or something like that, and you know you do not want to go over 95 IRE. Uh, maybe if you're shooting one of those shots where you're floating in white space, um, this will allow you to set the IRE maximum warning. So as you, you light your set, um, you can make sure that you do not get too close to 100 for those those all white sets. Uh, we also have uh, where you can uh, select and uh, your under warning. Uh, right now it's set for zero. We, if you want to and you want to maybe say anything, uh, nothing under 10, you can see as we go that we get the, uh, uh, the magenta color uh, in, in there. Now, these are both user definable. They'll stay in there uh, when you turn the monitor off uh, and you can set them to whatever else you want. Uh, we also have an additional uh, setting here that we call clip guide and the clip guide is real similar uh, that if the things are over instead of showing you covering up your entire screen with false color it only shows you uh, the areas that are over warning uh, so I have, I've set my uh, my Luma over warning for 100 IRE so anything in this on the monitor right now that is flashing this this uh, purple color is, or violet color is uh, means that it's over 100 IRE uh, so if I want to bring everything within, uh, within spec to make it under a 100, all I have to do is simply close my iris down and that means that everything in the picture is under 100 IRE. It's a really useful feature. It uh, kind of helps you uh, make sure nothing exceeds 100. And then once again, it's actually, it's actually selectable. It's kinda, um, you can actually set it from the 85 to 110 as you do with the uh, upper level of the, uh, uh, for false color. Along with the false color and the clip guide, uh, we've also added uh, peaking. Uh, it too is another, uh, another function of the monitor, whereas the natural colors of the uh, scene are, are, are removed and they're replaced by an overlay of sorts uh, with a different look to it. Uh, peaking can be used to help you find focus. Uh, if you look at the monitor now, you can see along the edges of, uh, of the, the object that we have kind of a uh, a, a, a highlight or a glow around it that's in white. And as I try to focus, you'll see that the, the edge gets much crisper and shorter, sh sharper on the glow. And whenever things are really in focus, the line becomes, the glow becomes a very fine edge. And as you go past focus, it will start to glow and become a wider edge again. And so the peaking finds the edges. And so we'll Maybe if you look right here along the edge of this uh, lens of this old camera, we can see that the, the edge is very, very fine. And if I go past focus, it starts to get a little wider and a little softer. And then as I bring it in, it will go around the other way. And then go past focus once again, it will start to get a little soft. And so when I'm exactly in focus, uh, the white lines will be very sharp and very clean. And that helps you find the edge. Um, and depending upon what you're focusing on, what part of the focus is going to be determined where you want the sharpest line. I can actually see that this lens right here is very sharp, but this is a little soft. Maybe if I roll my focus a little bit the other way, that this becomes the fine line, that becomes a little soft. So with peaking, it will actually allow you to become, uh, to g give you an edge, uh, so to speak, in uh, being able to find your focus. Uh, when you're done finding your focus, you can simply turn it off and you go back to your natural colors.